Hello and welcome to another romance seminar. I'm your host Jay Green and uh, today I want to talk about something a little bit different than romance. I want to talk about economics and specific I want to talk about micro macro economics. Micro and macro economics. Um, I, I was thinking about this whole idea of what's going on inside the Middle East and I just thought how much more sense would the world make if you looked at it from the perspective of economics that is wars uh, suffering so forth and so on how how much different or how much more sense would the world make right now it doesn't make much sense if you look at it from people caring about people perspective but if you look at it from a purely capitalistic motivation um, preserving the pocket preserving the dollar how much different would the world look that is and George Bush said that he was going to uh, cap Afghanistan to get Osama bin Laden. Um, then he changed the plan and said, we got to go get a Saddam Hussein. When we went to go to get Saddam Hussein, we dethroned him from power. We took over. They had all these oil fields. Now, now let's look at that from an economic standpoint. China and India are wanting to, they're becoming developed countries and they're going about this whole process where they're developing nations. Wouldn't it make strategic sense to go and sit on the oil reserves in Iraq? So we don't really control them, but if something would, was to go bad or south for the uh, United States government, which is based on oil as far as the, the, the uh, major commodity and resource, then technically, wouldn't it be, make so much strategic sense to go invade Iraq um, and sit on the oil reserve? So that way, if China tries to invade um, Iraq, we're already there. If we're, we're securing our interest, oil, to our that is uh, the basic fuel for our economy, or in our cars and a whole lot of other products and, and, and services and things of that nature, we're preserving our interests. Another point, right now, George Bush is about to take uh, Korea, North Korea off the evil list. That evil list, um, if you think about it now, let's go back a little bit and let's uh, examine what's going on inside of uh, the world. Why is China and India becoming developed nations? Well, because all the uh, the industry leaders in America started sending their factories over to India and China and Vietnam. And as these people begin to develop, they want they developed a middle class. That's what the only thing third world nations are, are missing, a middle class. Now, as we send our factories over the, to these other nations, they develop a middle class. And the, the rates increase, things of this nature, as far as the, the, the wage increases. These people tend to want more, so then they have more luxury in their lives. So you, they're using their money, they're using our money to grow their countries. Now, what happens as we leave, as our factories leave America, it turns us into more of a service industry. Now, with what's happening with the recession and oncoming depression that we're uh, about to experience, um, the middle class is about to is is being annihilated in America. There's no, you have to have a college degree and you have to have a master's really to really bring home some money. If you make it fifty thousand dollars a year, you're pretty much poor. If you make it eighty thousand dollars a year, you're middle class. You know, ten years ago that wasn't the case. So just looking at the changes in the world economy and how America is faring. You know, um, I was just reading a report that China is going through and buying parts of Africa. Now, think about these countries, India and China. They're the most populous countries in the world. I heard on a reporter on the Discovery Channel or MSNBC, I, I don't recall, but they were saying that there are really as many children in India as there are adults in the United States. Now, with that, Think about how many states are barely populated in the United States. Think about how much territory in Africa is barely populated. So now these countries don't have to set up an army anymore. They All they have to do is go through the whole process of buying up all the land because these the people all believe in capitalism. Now, so then I scratched my head. I said, well, I wonder why the people in Washington don't get this, but they do. But one day you might be sending your power bill off to Zhao Pei, you know, uh, in industries. You know, you might be paying a mortgage to um, Tao Tao uh, Mortgage Company. And what I'm getting at is, when does America have to temper its capitalistic uh, endeavors with a social uh, uh, preservation?